Hi everyone, in today's video we're going to have a go of playing around with the form tool. So we're going to go at modelling something like this, sort of like a face cream sort of tube. So what we're going to do is use the form tool. So if you're looking at the actual shape of it, the bottom bit quite easy. You can just do like a, a circle and extrude it up and then emboss or deboss or extrude like those shapes out of it. But this sort of shape is a little bit more of an unusual shape. Now I've done something kind of similar when we did the toothbrush and toothpaste video. So I did a loft, so I started with a circle and then a um, rectangle on the other side and lost them together, which worked, but it's also doable with the form tool. Now I could actually probably a little bit easier with the form tool. So I'm gonna click on this purple box here. I'm gonna to go to cylinder. I'm gonna pick the bottom plane. I'm gonna just drag out. I'm gonna make that circle say, 50 and hit, or well, not gonna hit, and sorry, I'm gonna click. Because then what I can do is I can drag up for having I want it to be. So I'm gonna come to the side and then I think we'll probably make it say 100, yeah, something like that. Now before I hit okay, if you've never used forms before, what you've got is faces, edges, and vertices. Now at the minute, once we're creating our form shape, we can say how many more faces we want. Now the faces are sort of these individual in, or sorry, in between your bits here. So you can pump those numbers up. The more you have, the more control you have over it, but sometimes it means it can be, you've got more control points, but sometimes it means it's a bit more work. So if you have less and you drag them out, it kind of flows a little bit better. But I'm gonna just up it just a little bit, just by one, and hit okay. So if you've never used it before, once you've got it, the best thing to do is you right click and go to edit form and you get this window up here, okay? Now to begin with, as I said, you've got faces, which is the that face there, edges, which are the lines, and vertices, which are those. Right? If I double click on an edge, it'll select all the edges on that row. Same if I go this way. If you hold down shift, you can grab multiple at the same time. Um, and this widget thing at the minute is basically got all of them together. So this has got moving, like that. It's got scaling, like that, and it's got from moving as well. So I'm going to control Z just to undo all of that. Okay, so first thing I want to do is I'm going to grab this top edge here. I'm going to try and make it, so we're going to get that picture back up again, to make it sort of wider at the top. That's the first little thing we're going to do. Okay, now we've got, I'll double click that edge so I can start to like scale it and make it bigger, but at the minute that's not really having the effect that we want. Okay, so I'm going to control Z. If in doubt, by the way, Control Z, you can do a lot of undoing when using the form tool. So if you come to here to soft modification, and you'll see here these sort of red things have started to appear. That's basically saying, look, we're going to affect here, but if I drag now, it's going to slowly affect, like within that perimeter, those ones as well. Okay? But I'm going to just undo that. Because you then also here have got, you can do it so it's smooth, do it so it's linear, you can do it so it's bulge. If I do, I'll do all three to show so smooth, it tries to. So bear with me one second. There we go. So smooth, and you can make that diameter more as well. So it tries as much as it can do to sort of make it fade as well as it can do. So I'm gonna just change to this one and do it like that. Hopefully you can start to see the difference a little bit. So I'm just gonna do the last one as well. So you drag that and you see it sort of bulges out a bit more instead. So that one in fact is called bulge. Okay. So the one we're going to use, I'm going to go right click edit again. I'm going to go to soft modification. I'm going to go to linear. I'm going to bring this up just a bit to something like that. Something like that. Okay, so it's starting to get the shape in that view, but obviously if I go to the side, it's not at all. So what we're going to do is come here, edit form, and same thing, but this time I'm going to scale them together, like that. So you see now it's starting to take the shape already of, right, okay, so that was the same thing again. I kept the same settings, linear, 0 
Um, I, I basically got this by the way, trial and error before I was sort of practicing the best sort of settings to go with. Um, you can play with the slider, sometimes it, it is just trial and error for a few minutes to see like how big or small of a, like, a selection you want it to be. I'm going to hit OK. So now we've already got that basic sort of shape, which actually isn't far off. And if you're going to do that, the only other way I think you really you'll do that is lofting and you still look a little bit unorganic, for want of a better word. Now obviously we've got that hole there, we want to fill that in. So let's grab that, go to modify and fill hole. Now to begin with, it automatically collapses it. Okay, we don't want that. So I'm going to come here and go and keep creases like that. And then you've got three options. You've got your reduce star, which is trying to keep as few extra faces as possible. Fill star, which gets rid of all of them. And collapse, which tries to connect all of them into the middle, into one vertices, which we don't want. So what we're going to do is just go to fill star, like that, and hit OK. So then what we're going to do is I am going to, in fact, before I do that one, I'm going to grab that edges. Go to edit form. Now, as we're going to do that, if I hold down alt and drag it up, it'll start to extrude and add some new faces. So I'm just going to do that once and then scale that back in a bit and then do it one more time and scale it in even more like that. And now I'm going to fill hole. So I'm going to go to modify and fill hole like that. Now, the shape looks about right, but if you see there, obviously you've got a bit more of a crease, so we want to add a bit more of a crease along, say, this line here. Or let's try this one first. Let's go to modify. And you can either go to crease or bevel. I like to go to bevel. Just because I, I use Maya a lot, and you, if you've ever used Maya or Blender, you know about adding like supporting edges to things. So you tend to like beveling. So you can add in extra edges to so add two, and then if you grab these sliders, you can make them come closer or smaller together. So basically, the original edge is the one in the middle, and the supporting edges are the two extra ones there. So I'm going to drag those oh, closer together. Hit OK, and that's now going to give it a bit more of a crease. Now it's a bit hard to see while you're not in um, rendering. So what I'm actually going to do is just add an appearance. I'm just going to add a plastic and just grab like a, something like this and just give it like a off-white sort of colour like that. And then if you go to render, you can start to see the effect it's starting to have. So if you come out, you can sort of see the crease a little bit there, we need to add a bit more of a crease I feel, so let's go to, back to edit that form. I am going to come in, double click on that edge, edit form, oh no, not edit form, sorry, wrong thing, modify and bevel. Again I'm going to I'm gonna bring that up a little bit. Like that, and then what I'm probably going to do is let's bevel this one more time. Let's modify bevel edge. See how that looks. Like that. Now we jump to render. Let's have a quick look. There you go. That looks much more like what we're after. So the actual shape of the like squeezy part of the tube is done. So when we jump into render, by the way, it automatically ends um, editing the form for you. But if you want to change that, you can always right click and edit there. Now we do want to make it thicker. Now I'm going to quickly save this. So let's do uh, this. Because we've got it saved. Now we want to thicken it. Now you can thicken it in form or you can thicken it in surface. They do the same thing, but slightly different results and it's a like quality of it. So let's just try it with this one first. Let's click that, go to thicken and we're going to do like 0.1. So that now should have given it a little bit more thickness. You can add more or less depending on what you want to do. So let's finish off form there. 
And what that means is there is that white still means it's a it's a proper body. If we hadn't have thickened it, it would have gone to orange or yellow, sorry, not orange, which means it's like a surface, okay, which you'd have to have thickened later. But if, like I say, if you'd have done that anyway, you go to surface, if you go to uh, create and thicken, same tool, just slightly um, different. I, I prefer doing thicken in forms because you're working in forms anyway, but they both pretty much do the same thing. Okay, so we've got that. So next thing to do is we're going to do the actual uh, top part, the hard plastic bit where everything comes out of it. So we did a circle diameter of 50. So I'm going to just turn that off for a second, go back to solids. And because we did it right in the middle, it's perfect. So we know what we're doing. I'm just going to turn it on so we can check that lines up. Perfect. E to extrude. I'm just going to turn this on. And we're just going to come down. I'm going to go somewhere like that. So that's going to be our top part. So what we want to do is have the actual like indent part for it. So what we can do is a few ways we can do that. So first of all, I want to just be able to draw it. So you try and create a sketch. On a cylinder you can't do it but if you go to construct and tangent plane and then click this plane will go right onto the edge of that cylinder so now i'm going to create a sketch hit p for project and just grab that line there so i can go right in the middle so i'm now going to get this equal because then what i'm going to do let's go to Arc, oh, sorry, excuse me. To the line first. And then I'm going to go to arc, so let's go to arc, so I can find the middle. There we go, I'm going to find the middle there. Like that. And just come out. Let's mirror that. Okay, and then let's just make that bit of a smoother transition. Something like that. Finish sketch. Okay, so now we want to have that sort of cutting into this surface. So again, two ways. We could have the extruder or we could try embossing it. So we'll go to emboss, sketch profiles. Let's grab those two. Face, let's grab that. And at the minute, you see what's happening? It's cutting out of it. We want to cut into it. Something like that, but maybe not quite as much. Maybe if we do half as much, let's try like one. Something like that. And then we want to have a bit more of a smooth line. So let's try like 0.5. And then let's have Won't let me do this. Let's try. No, it won't let me do that one. Okay. That looks good. Let's hit OK. And then while we're at it, let's. No, not yet. So I was going to fill, fill at the top edge there, which we will do, but not just yet. So let's take this one. Control C, Control V, copy and paste it. Then I get this little widget. I'm going to flip it, 180. And then I'm going to move it into position. As close as we can do. So you can move the pivot point if you wish to. So I'm going to go like there and reset it. Just to fill in that gap. How close are we? A tiny bit more. Okay. 
like that. Now obviously, normally, the top bit is smaller than the bottom bit. So let's, again, I'm gonna quit that little save just so nothing happens. I'm gonna push pull, press this, and then let's drag that down a bit. Like that. Now I'm gonna spill it some more edges. Let's grab that edge. And that's not the one I wanna grab. Let's just hide that for a second. Fill it, grab this one, drag that in. Just a little bit. Something like that. And then a bit of a bigger fillet on this side. Like that. And then we do want to have a hard plastic on there. So maybe if we do the same, oh, let's duplicate it. Let's duplicate to make that a little bit darker. Like that, let's see how it's looking. Okay, and then what we're going to do is just put where the little hinge would be. So up back here, let's just go to construct and tangent plane again. Let's right, sketch. And then let's do Rectangle, so a rectangle. Something. Like that. And then let's, let's see if emboss will work. Let's try emboss. Let's grab those profiles. Faces, gonna grab. No, not gonna work. Will you work on that? No. Okay, let's turn off tangents. Okay. Right. Just gonna leave this on for a second and just try something and see if I want to sketch back on. If not, I'm just going to extrude it. I just want to see if this would work. Let's go and boss and do the same thing again. Like that. I'm going to turn that sketch off. And then all I wanted to try and do, well, let's just see if you go to create lock. You. You. Click. Okay. Well, let's go to new body. Just so those can stay separate. When it comes to like texturing. Okay. But what we will do is make sure that we add that to there. So we've got a little hinge. We have got our hard bottom piece, and then we've got our actual overall cylinder. Give it a little save. So, quick little introduction to forms. I am going to quickly, let's just Grab all of those, I'm going to just do C, V, copy and paste. I'm going to drag over here as well. Just to show a little bit extra. Let's move it around like that. And then on this one, right click the new copy. Okay, one 
second, let's just do it again really quick. Grab those, control C, control V. Drag it over. Drag it around to 90, bring it up. And I'm gonna grab that one. Let's move our pivot point. going to move all of this up a little bit and then on the inside let's just do the little bit that comes out so let's create a circle So I've got one of these tubes in front of me just so I can sort of get an idea of what I'm doing. Do this one. And then let's cut. Let's see how it looks in render. Slightly like because obviously the main one we've done is closed, so you can't really see inside of it, which is fine and totally normal, but it's good to sort of show both parts something like that, and then what size circle is that? So let's just go to Dimension, just dimension that. Three point okay, three point nine. Okay, so let's just do circle three point nine. E to brood. up a little bit like that so that now looks like that would open there again I'm going to give that a quick little save and then what I might be tempted to do just make it look like a little bit of squeeze of cream is coming out there so let's construct 
axis through a cylinder like that then let's construct and then play at an angle rotate that 90 degrees then all we're going to do is let's do like create arc don't want anything massive just something like that then construct plane along the path and then go a little sketch on here then all we'll do is let's go to create and sweep grab that profile grab that path change up the new body and the whole point of that is just so it kind of looks like a little bit of cream has come out of the tube maybe make that a little bit fatter can we press 4 make that fatter we can. Excellent. And then can't make that a bit shorter. Press for them that way. Even better. And then let's just fill it like that. And I'll put that is simply just so it kind of looks like there's a little bit of cream coming out of it. Let's add it's like paint glossy, like glossy white, like that. Okay, and then last thing I'm going to do is let's grab all of that, move copy. Just gonna rotate it slightly like that, and then do the same. This one here, the copy. Let's just rotate it slightly, so a little bit off center. Okay, so let's just jump it around and see how they look. So that is a little project to introduce you to the form tool. Obviously, we didn't use the form tool for everything, but for the main part, we use the form tool for getting the shape of these. Uh, bodies and then sort of played around with circle extrude and that sort of thing to make the actual hard part of the case. Um, I will jump over to some of the painted tabular texture as well just to sort of play around with it but we've textured it a little bit in there. Okay so before we can go into substance painted to texture it we just need to unwrap it quickly so go to go to file and import and then I have got it saved on my desktop in which where did I put it there it is okay so if you've ever not done this before from fusion it changes the orientation uh, for some reason I've never really figured out why easy fix though select all hold down E uh, press E sorry to rotate and hold down J to snap it into position like that and then what I can do as well <coughs> excuse me just bring them up to the top of the grid and then just bring oh, and then bring this one up ever so slightly as well and that one needs to come back down okay so <coughs> excuse me so I want to unwrap them okay what we're going to do I'm sorry I've just noticed we've got these weird artifacts here so I think what's going on by the looks of it is we've got some overlapping faces 
Now, if you're not familiar with Maya, we could get rid of those. We could right click the faces and start to find the ones that are overlapping. Um, but if you're not familiar with Maya, it's a bit of a fiddly process. We won't, we'll leave it. Um, once we get, that will turn up in the viewport when we're texturing in Substance Paint, but once we go to render it, you won't see that. It'll just annoy you while it's there, but you won't actually be visible. But yeah, if you're familiar with faces and edges and that sort of thing within Maya, um, you could go to face mode and you can start, because you can see, yeah, there's bits that are overlapping that we sort of need to get rid of. Um, but this isn't really a great video to be doing that with. So I'm going to select all of that, go to UV and delete UVs, select them all, go to UV and UV editor. And then just for convenience sake, I'm going to go to create and automatic. Select them all again. UV shell, select them all, right click, modify, and layout. So what we're looking for is that just as long as all the cubes are similar sort of shapes, uh, sizes, and there's not too much distortion. There's a little bit of distortion along the back here, but you can see that's because the two bits were joined together. Um, but actually, for the most part, looks like it's worked okay. So what we last thing we're gonna do once we close the UV editor is just add a colour ID to it. So I'm gonna grab those two. Let's go to Blin and just give that a colour, doesn't matter what. And then let's grab these bits like that right click favorite add another color it really doesn't matter what color you're doing it just means that when you're texturing it later it's a lot easier to assign materials to like that okay so now we've got this unwrapped we've got a color ID onto it we can take them over to substance painter to texture so I'm just going to, go to file export a desktop let's call that uh, face cream cube okay so in the next part we'll go over to substance painter to texture okay so now that we're in substance painter we're going to bring in our models we're going to file and new select and we're going to grab our face cream cube change the resolution to 2k and hit ok Okay, so we've got our model in. Now the overlapping faces haven't appeared yet, but uh, don't get your hopes up. As soon as we start to like bake the, the maps on it, it will do. But once we go to render it, you won't see them again. So it'll just be a bit of an annoyance as you're seeing it. But just go to edit and bake mesh maps. Just change that resolution to what we did before. So we did 2K and bake selected text. Remember when you're choosing the resolution, it's just to do with how good a, a your PC or your laptop is. If you've got quite a poor one, and graphics card's not that good, do a lower resolution. If you've got a decent one, you can go higher. Like if I do 8K on my laptop, it starts to go pretty slowly. Okay, now we're not doing a lot of texturing, we're just gonna add some basic materials to it really. So basically it's the same sort of color, but the lid is more glossy and the uh, top is more matte. So we're just gonna take plastic glossy there, drag that on. Then let's just make that white, and then let's take our matte warm, and then let's, wait, I got that the wrong way around. Let's take our glossy, put it on there. Oh no, I did do that one right, let's delete that one. And then on this one, I didn't want glossy, I'm gonna get rid of that. I want it matte, like that. Okay, and then we're gonna turn that white, but slightly off, just a little bit, something like that. And I think what we'll do is let's just use some glossy to make that the cream bit as well. And we'll put that as white as well. So I'm not gonna go into massive detail about adding loads of extra details like logos and stuff, but if you're doing like branding, you've got your own logo, it's very easy to sort of import it. So you come down here to import resources, bring your own logo in, add it on there. So I'm just gonna come over to render over here. 
So here you can see all the artifacts, extra face and everything have disappeared. So as annoying as it was, it's not actually going to affect our final render. Let's just change a couple of things in our rendering. Or my computer can freeze. There we go, so clear uh, background, we do clear colour like that. And then let's change the lighting slightly. Let's do like studio lighting, change it like that. And I just say so got a bit more contrast. I might just quickly go back and change. changes yeah something like that so the whole point of this really was to show you the form tool play around with it how easy it is to create some complex shapes so as i said originally when i did like the toothpaste tube um project with you um we did a loft it's got the same effects really but i, I do feel like the form tool is just a, a bit of a faster and a bit of a nicer way to do it it's quite fun to play around with um but Hopefully you found that useful and interesting. If you've got any questions, please leave a comment down below or email me at designwithsimon@outlook.com.